Tip number six, I've been guilty of this, is, <laughs> and I still use it, but there's exceptions to the rule. Singers, ditch the iPad. If you've been a permanent singer for over a year, you should have the songs memorized by now. If they are not, if the band is not always switching out the songs, if the songs are pretty consistent and steady, especially if it's a tribute band, you should have the songs memorized because usually tribute bands, they don't really switch out the songs because there's only so many songs there are only so many songs that they have done that are their hit songs. So those usually don't change. They might add one on maybe six months out the door. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about uh, bands that consistently keep the set list the same. What I mean by ditching the iPad is that if you're a permanent singer in a band, you've been performing with them for about a year now, you should have the songs memorized because you should have them memorized. The musicians memorize their music, but you know, it's easier to memorize chords, especially if a song only has four chords, it's easier to do that than it is for a singer to memorize thousands of words per song. Sometimes there's 30, 40 songs. I'm not talking about that. I've been in many bands where the band manager wasn't as understanding because they're not singers. A lot of them are not singers, so they don't understand what it's like to memorize thousands of words per song, and there's like 30, 40 songs. I've been in bands where there was a new song every time I was on a set. So to memorize all those songs, every time we had a gig, there was a new song, there was like three or four new songs added. That's impossible to memorize all the songs because they keep adding new songs. That's a different situation. So if they're expecting you to memorize those songs, they say, well, just talk to them, pull them aside. You know, I know you don't understand because you're not a singer, but every time we have a gig, you're adding new songs. So, so that makes it harder for me to memorize the songs because when I come in and do a gig, there's like five or six different new songs after I'm still working on the previous set for the previous gig, trying to memorize those songs, you just added on six more. So that makes it almost impossible to keep memorizing songs when they keep adding them. Try being a singer. It's easy for musicians to say, oh, don't use an iPad. I'm so sick and tired of hearing that. You try it. It's really hard. It's harder to memorize a bunch of words, thousands of words, than it is four chords in a song. Because most of that, what they're doing is muscle memory. Ours is we have to memorize the words. It's a lot easier than you think. Try, how do I know? Try it next time. Try it. And not just for one song or two songs. 30 songs and they're brand new. And they give you a month to memorize all 30 of those songs. And you've never sung them before. Try it. It's not that easy. Basically what I'm saying is as far as ditch the iPad. If you've been on a band and the band does not change out the songs and they've got 25 songs, you're covering the female leads. There's another singer, male singer. He's covering the male vocals. By a year's worth time, I'd say roughly about a year, year and a half, you should have those songs memorized by then. Because even if you skip out words and you might forget words, and that does happen, it looks really bad. But as from musicians and other musicians watching you, and also um, the sound guys watching you, and other bookers and talent buyers watching you, you're the only one that's got an iPad on the stage. <laughs> and, you know, I've been guilty of this. I still do this. Um, I do this for my solo gigs because I'm still starting out. Um, but there's going to come a point because I just started out as a solo performer. I'm not used to being a solo performer doing three sets by myself where I'm a one man band. I'm playing my saxophone. I'm playing the tracks. I'm singing the songs for three hours by myself. And I'm I'm the sound person. I'm uh, adjusting the sound you know, based on the acoustics in the room, and I have to make those adjustments. So I'm giving myself some time to memorize those songs where I don't need the iPad, but give it about a year or so, you should have the songs memorized. That's if they don't keep changing out the songs. It just looks better when you don't have an iPad on the stage. This doesn't apply to horn players when they're playing parts. This applies to singers. When you're the only one on the stage that has that, you shouldn't have it. I'm not talking about horn players and horn sections. That's a totally different gig. That's a totally different thing. And that's for a different video. There's exceptions to the rule. Like I said, this just goes to singers that still have the iPad when all the musicians, everybody else are not using them. You've been singing with that band for more than a year. You shouldn't have one by then. So those are my tips for being a successful live gigging musician. Hopefully you found some of these tips helpful. Thanks for watching my video. Again, my name is Miko Reed and my channel is called Miko Music. I give commentary on music, commentary on pop culture, commentary on relationships. I really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell so I'll notify you of new up and coming videos that just have recently been uploaded. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for watching. Bye.